So, while I was busy working on getting my Last of Us episode reviews caught up to date, something of course happened with Dragon Age 4. Someone told me about this last night, but I didn't get around to looking into it until four in the morning because apparently I've turned into a complete and total work sleeve within the past week. Given the complete lack of any real news on Dragon Age 4, I was trying to keep my inner fangirl at bay while calmly tracking down the resources which have since been deleted. I still managed to hunt down the files though using a little trick of the trade that goes <clears throat> way back. So here's the deal. This person made a post on Reddit and within the post, they added two separate links as well as a note concerning their background and a description of the clip and pictures that they shared. I'll put the link down below and you can go ahead and read the whole thing yourself if you'd like. In the meantime, I can summarize it for you and compare it against the shared images. So basically, this poster was friends with a DA4 playtester. The tester had recorded gameplay of Dragon Age 4 in the early alpha stage. They also mention being surprised there was no reveal at the Game Awards based on when the video was shared with them, but doesn't offer any clue as to when that actually was. I'm assuming from the tone though that it was likely long before the awards, right? They say they received and are in possession of a 20 minute video of gameplay footage from the Dragon Age Dreadwolf Alpha. That it's set within the Grey Ward and Fortress of Weisupt. And I mean, I knew I was probably right about that based on the concept art we were going there, but I'm so excited about actually finding out for sure that we're going to be chilling with the Grey Wardens again. And it doesn't seem from what I can see, at least that it's going to be in the same bad light that we saw them portrayed with in Inquisition. Okay, calm down, fangirl, calm down. Sorry, she gets excited sometimes. So one thing I noticed before even reading the entire post, because I had to watch the animated GIF attached to the post, like. 50 times over before I felt like I soaked enough of it up and then finding it confirmed in the post as well was that the dark spawn looked different. I thought, why do they look so weird? They're very obviously red. And it got me thinking, what if these are like red lyrium dark spawn? I was thrown off from the idea of there being any red lyrium in this clip because it actually appears like a fluorescent purple. I'm not sure why that is. Even in the Reddit post when I read it, the OP says there's red lyrium veins everywhere. So maybe this was some kind of discoloration in the clip? But holy crap, imagine something like a Herlock Alpha gets all pumped up with red lyrium. Now that sure is a bad day waiting to happen. The next thing that stands out to me is the text at the bottom where it shows characters talking. One named Rook saying, there's worse than Darkspawn on the way. And Davrin then says, and walls won't hold it back. Now, Davrin was already disclosed during the Dragon Age 4 behind the scenes teaser trailer from Gamescom 2020, voiced by Ike Amati, who is going to be a Grey Warden. The, wardens. the post mentions that you're with two companions, one who is a night dude and a female dwarf rogue. I'm guessing the night dude is Davrin, so possibly Rook is the female dwarf rogue. It's also possible it could be an NPC as well. It's not really easy to tell, but what really strikes me about all this, and I'm definitely sorry if I'm having trouble keeping my thoughts in line because that ADD is going wild right now as my brain pops from one clip to the post to the picture, then back again. But it's that the Reddit poster said the player character is an elvish knight and that the character screen says they are a gray warden. That fact alone has me excited beyond belief. I don't know if that is the only choice we're going to get, like an in Inquisition, or if this is an origin story sort of deal, like where maybe we can pick where we come from. How crazy would it be if you could pick between origins again? Like, I want to be someone who was in the Inquisition, or hell, what if you could pick your PC from each game? That would be something, but I'm probably going overboard with that. So back on track here, in the post it says you're fighting these dark spawn on the way to a library, which you can see as a quest objective in this picture. While this is happening, there's a dragon attacking from the sky that you ultimately come face to face with and chain up or something, but that the gameplay footage ends before that actually happens. Oh, but there's more because I haven't even gone through all the pictures or the rest of the gameplay details listed in the post. So in one of the pictures, you can see pretty clearly that the lighting is all red and you can still see those weird 
weird purple veiny nodes on the ground. The objective says destroy the spawn boils, and I'm definitely wondering what the heck that is. Is it like a funky red lyrium broodmother? Or maybe it's those purple nodes that they're talking about? Maybe it feeds through to a broodmother. Ugh, I don't know, but I love thinking about what it could mean. <laughs> Going back to the character screenshot, you can see the gear screen and what looks like three skill icons on the right. I find myself hoping that you get access to more skills than this, and I headed back over to the Reddit post to see if there's any clarification. It says the player has a regular combo attack, then their abilities, as well as a special bar, which generates allowing you to pull off a special move, sounding a lot like the Inquisitor's special moves using the mark. So it's very possible that that that's it. But given this is alpha, I'm going to hold out hope that maybe those are just specializations or something, because if you notice, there is also a skills tab in the menu. But then again, if you look back at this screenshot, you can see the same sword icon is there. So it's definitely a skill. But I cannot read the pink text on the other diamond shaped reticles that are on the hot bar. So I don't know. It's also very obviously on console because you can see the L plus R there. So I'd figure it's going to be the normal action bar for PC players. And the post confirms that by saying the UI is supposed to be similar to Inquisition, which I'm okay with. Getting to this picture, even though they don't show the face, I'm betting this is the female dwarf rogue mentioned by the OP, maybe even Rook. It's not possible to say for sure, but from the perspective, it does seem like she might be pretty short, that or the door is impossibly large, or both. <laughs> Who knows? But I'm thinking it's possible that could be your rogue companion. The outfit looks roguish to me, that or maybe it's Elvin. Here we see a bunch of people holding a gate shut, very likely the same one from the previous picture. By the next shot, they've gotten a board up across the door to secure it shut for now. The NPCs all look pretty chunky without a lot of textures, but you can make out a lot of different heights. Many of them seem to be dwarves, with some that are a bit taller than others. Now going back to this picture, I'm wondering if you can pick out the main character here. I might be completely off base here though, and that might just be another Grey Warden and not the PC. You can make out this character that was standing in the door too, and they seem to be the same height as the PC, so I guess it's not a dwarf then, given they're the same height as an elf, but it's the only character here that matches the color scheme of the one in the shot. So I don't know, I'm probably just grasping at straws here. Past that, there's so many characters here that it's impossible to know who's who, but it's interesting to try and pick out the ones we kind of know. Going back to the clip, because I forgot to mention it, I have to wonder what the deal is with this resilience name over the top of the character. It's kind of strange how it's in a little box too, like it's a username. I wondered if maybe this was a holdout from using Anthem's code and looked for some multiplayer footage from the game. While that square reticle isn't there, the font sure looks the same and it's placed over the top of the head too. I'm wondering if they'll get rid of that for single player or if they're going to implement more multiplayer stuff. Heck, now that I think about it, it could even be a skill. Guess we'll find out eventually. Now I'll go over everything I glossed over from the post. They mention it's meant to be like a 2018 God of War hack and slash, and I'm not wild about that at all. I'm kind of wondering how mages will fit into this. They say no party control was demonstrated, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I know in my own games, I've gone whole huge chunks of playing without switching to other characters. It's usually only necessary on hard encounters or when you need them to do something for you, like lock pick or down a magical barrier. One thing I almost left out that I didn't notice at all in the clip is that the player character's hair apparently looks glorious. <laughs> they say you can see it clipping through their helmet. And now that I look again, you can definitely see that. And it looks like it's flowing with the character's movement. So that is definitely gonna be a nice change compared to the absolutely awful helmet hair choices they've had in the Dragon Age games over the years. I mean, it's basically the first thing you mod when you play these games so you don't look like you have flat plastic hair or, you know, you can just be bald. <laughs> you can also still jump. Yay, I can't wait to start jumping like a mad woman to make it up a cliff again. <laughs>
So there you have it. Leaks are so much fun when they happen. I found myself pretty dang excited, but I'm still really wanting to see some demonstration directly from Bioware of the game. I want to know more. I want to know who all the companion characters are too, and I want to know who we play as. I feel like I've been waiting an eternity for this game, and I'm sure many of you Dragon Age fans out there feel the same exact way. We'll all keep an ear out for anything new and juicy though. I'll see you guys later.